Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What a, what a morning. What a 24 hours. How are you? I hope you're well. I hope you're celebrating today. Uh, if you're not an England fan, I still hope you're celebrating because it's been a win for we girls and women uh, and for all for the better. Ugh, outstanding. We have to get into it in full detail. Please subscribe. I am absolutely loving the amount of you who are getting involved and chatting, leaving comments. And I met actually some people who have been on the channel at the game yesterday at Wembley, which was just absolutely wonderful to get your insight and get your thoughts um this isn't the this isn't the end of anything this is the start of everything um i want to keep doing these videos i have been for quite some time but the wsl returns in september we'll focus on the wsl and perhaps carry this momentum from the women's euros over to the league um that would be absolutely outstanding and of course you've got the world cup to look forward to as well that's just around the corner i for one hope in scotland and ireland are going to get there and we know that england are going to be there and we know that their chances of uh, winning the world cup are now pretty high um good morning how are you wow unbelievable stuff uh, what an outstanding day that was yesterday so i don't know if you've you've seen my my vlog um but i, I want to get into the game in a little bit more detail because you can't really focus on the game and do this and i was working all day yesterday and it, it's just been hard to get a second um but you know exactly what happens the lioness is one uh two one in extra time chloe kelly the hero of the moment the tournament to be able to do that in the fashion that she did absolutely outstanding and um, before we go any further we have to just focus on the figures um so 87,192 people at Wembley yesterday um I was one of those people there I was so grateful to get a ticket through my new best friend Hannah who you saw in the vlog yesterday we had the best day ever um but getting out into the stadium coming up the stairs I keep getting goosebumps thinking about it because it felt like the most amazing sporting event I've ever witnessed, ever, ever. I've been to a lot of exciting games, a lot of exciting fights, a lot of exciting tournaments, and I've never seen anything like this. It was just everyone on the same wave, part of the same journey, and celebrating women's football, um, and obviously celebrating the Lionesses as well, who have been faultless from start to finish of this tournament. Uh, now the tournament's over and I can swallow humble pie because I thought Germany were going to win. I've said that. I'm not ashamed of that. Um, absolutely not ashamed of that at all. And I'm Scottish, so please stop pointing out that I'm Scottish and can't talk about England. That's just weird. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, just wow. You know, 17.4 million. 17.4 million of you watched that yesterday. That just doesn't happen. That has never happened. So these these things today have all coming together and putting the game just to the side for one second. This is the start of something incredible. This is the start of a new journey for women and girls in football. Let's just focus on that. What happens next season in the WSL? Hopefully we're going to see more fans come along. They're going to meet their heroes on their doorstep. You know, I cannot wait to go and see Alessio Russo play for Manchester United. I'm doing it. I go to Bowdoin Wood week in, week out to see Arsenal, where my sister-in-law Katie McKay plays. I can't wait. I'm hopefully going to try and get a ticket there because it's going to be so blooming busy. Uh, the opening games of the season, by the way, most of them are going to be played at the men's stadium as well, um, which is great. And that's that opportunity to show that, you know, the, the momentum won't just die now. It'll just keep carrying on into the season as well. I think that's a really good um, move from clubs as well, if we can do that. Okay, so um, where to start? Uh, Wembley yesterday, wow, just wow. I, I was actually sitting um, in the Lioness's hospitality seat um, as a Scottish woman, that was funny, uh, but it was just a wonderful experience. Everybody around me just getting right into it. You couldn't ignore, this. you just couldn't ignore the atmosphere. It was hard to focus on the football, I have to say, because I was just looking around me going, Jeez Louise, what is happening? This is unbelievable. And for me, I always thought this day would come. I did. I always saw that the women would sell out stadiums. I always did see that millions would tune in to watch it. I always did see that women's football would make that change in my lifetime. I knew it was going to happen. But then when you're there in it and getting to witness it and be part of it, it's just the most amazing feeling ever. Um, well done, Lionesses. Well done. Everybody who's taken part in this tournament, to the managers, to the staff, and to the fans who have gone to every game that they possibly can, uh, because it's been you that's helped make this change. Um, and long may that continue. Um, okay, so it started um, with the news. 
Uh, Alexandra Pop, who was going for the Golden Boot, a uh, Germany striker, was ruled out in the warm-up. So she was announced in the team news. I was working on here for Talk Sport going, yep, yeah, no changes to the Germany side or the England side. Pop up front. Pop, Mead, who's going to get the Golden Boot, all that chat, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'd spoken to Emma Hayes, as, you, as you'd seen maybe in the vlog as well. She was saying, Pop, you know, that player of the tournament, Beth Mead, because they score the goals, they get so much credit and they deserve it because they've been outstanding. Um, but Alexandra Pop, to be injured in the warm-up, what, how's your luck? How's your luck, love? And she was so exciting to look forward to in this game as well because our, our pre-match press conferences have been like captivating and exciting and she's really fun and she's shown these sides of her personality. She's a zookeeper, by the way, as well, a trained zookeeper. Uh, she's perfect. You know, she's a women's footballer. She's absolutely brilliant. Uh, she can keep animals and have a laugh as well um she's my new favorite person i will say um, and i'm just devastated that she didn't get that moment you know but no matter what team you support that's hard that's hard to for, for her to to take um she's missed all of the major finals due due to injury so for that to happen when you're good to go in a warm-up is just the worst luck ever and uh, england were probably rubbing their hands together going you know, we appreciate her and everything that she's been through, but having her out of the side was was a, a good thing uh, for England. Um, so fair play, Alexandra Pop. We hope to see it at the World Cup, that's for sure, because she's a talent, you know, who cannot be missed out. Um, and England, no changes to the starting lineup. We saw Serena Wiegmann's changes come uh, to, to the squad a little bit earlier. They've been creeping forward kind of minutes every time. You know, a decent first half, you know, they had that chance. Ellen White again had that chance, um, but they couldn't quite bury it. I thought Germany were defensively outstanding. England also outstanding, but in the moments, I thought, oh, Germany are so good. Set pieces, by the way. Wow, that, you know, those were the moments where they could have really capitalised, and they would have with Pop on their side. Um, but England were the ones to do it, to break them down, to dig deep. Um, so many areas that you can focus on. And let's just start in the midfield. Um, Georgia Stanway and Kira Walsh. Kira Walsh got played off the match. Um, she is just that yeah, unit in the midfield and the communication that she offers, the balls that she put in, her way to pass, how she holds up the game. It's just, just wonderful. She's such uh, an outstanding talent. And anybody saying she's not getting the credit she deserves, I think certainly over the last couple of weeks, she's getting the credit she deserves. And she got that yesterday. Um, at the final as well. She's been a wonderful player to watch and uh, just what a machine to have in your midfield. Um, at the back line, you know, defensively, I thought they were solid. Again, I do feel with Alex Greenwood coming on, there was a shift. There was an instant shift as well. Uh, Rachel Daly did have a very, very good game. And I think down the left, they would have been tested as well because that brand uh, on the left-hand side for, for Germany is just, oh, she's she's an absolute machine. Um, but the change that happened, of course, was that of Ella Toon. I think she came on at 56 minutes and got the goal at 62 minutes. Um, and just beautiful, beautiful little goal from her as well over the keeper's head. And it was slow motion. By the way, it was slow motion. If you were there and you were seeing it, you're going, uh, 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 there you go. Um, what a moment for her. I I've loved seeing the likes of Ella Toon and Alessia Russo just having this fun uh, at this tournament as well. It's been it's been a joy to watch them. Uh, I will say that. And again, cannot wait to see them play for Manchester United next season. Go and see them play. You're going to get that and a little bit more. And you're possibly going to get a selfie as well if you're a big fan because they always stay behind after the games at the full-time whistle and, and see to the fans. Um, yeah, Ella Toon, just taking that moment in those big games. You know, she's done it every time it's just so it's so exciting to see um and then of course it was Lena McGill uh, for Germany who leveled it out I was sitting the, the German fans were down there to my right and I was sitting with Hannah who is a Scotswoman and she's got German background and roots and she was kind of rooting for Germany um and she was like come on my back in the game kind of thing um and it was an outstanding goal you know again just they're they're different gravy and they're so they're so clinical in those right moments um and then and then i think germany just kind of lost the plot they they seem to you know actually have a bit of a moment and there was um a lack of discipline shall we say uh, you could see that england were getting under the skin you could see at one point i, I noticed um it might be Brand actually get down into Mary Earp's ear and just kind of say something to her. You could see they were starting to get riled. Uh, the notes were coming on uh, and they couldn't quite do it. I think it went five at the back, one, 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 one. Um, and it just wasn't quite clicking. Um, and that's when England just kind of, that's when they got better because we know that the strength and depth that they've got. Um, in comes Chloe Kelly. Um, 
I, I think is a wicked player. You know, I, she's such a brilliant player. I spoke to her not last season, the season before. I think she assisted. The, it was most assists she got in the WSL and I'd spoken to her uh, and I was like what a player she is for her to get that ACL injury uh, there was doubts whether she was going to make it to the Euros and, and she's made it and to see that moment when the, the ball went in it was a scramble in front of goal it wasn't the cleanest uh, finish at all and that hesitation is it in is it not but for her she knew and to take her top off and swing it above her head and oh just Yes, I need that picture printed and up on the wall uh, behind me. In fact, it could go right there. It could go right there. Um, was iconic. You know, we've seen that moment before with Brandy Chastain in the, in the US in 1999 when she scored that penalty. She took her top off, fell to her knees. Um, you know, that women in sports bra thing is starting to come out at the moment. There's been some journalists talking about how it ended on a sports bra. I'm like, shut up stop talking what did you want her to take that off as well like you know she just looked incredible for me I was like you're a vision you're the happiest woman in this world right now you've worked so hard she got her tour buses to Wembley to FA Cup days then she scores the winner of the European Championships against the the greats of this competition the greats of women's football she's finished her dinner and that's how she celebrated um I couldn't have asked for a better celebration she got a yellow card of course because she took the top off um but who even cares who even cares it was a moment for we girls all over the world uh, who watched on 17.4 million in the 87,192 at Wembley to go wow no, no one could fault her she was she was sensational I was working with Courtney Sweetman Clark who's Sheffield United striker you always see her Sky Sports she's a pundit she's everywhere at the moment she's a wonderful person to work with um, and she's known Chloe Kelly for quite some time and she could barely hold back the tears you know because you see what it means to this woman you know it's just everything for so many years she played with the boys like so many so many women on that park yesterday they played with the boys like so many women even in the stadium you know you you had to kind of break off and find your own way uh, she has four brothers or five brothers who she played with all the time Alessia Russo's family I met yesterday um and the brothers always said they used to just stick her in goal and just fire shots at her and that built that kind of hard exterior and her to be ready and physical um just so many, so many of those women can can relate to that, and here they are getting this moment in the sun, like they so deserve. Um, what's interesting is the the prize fund as well. I don't know if you're interested in this, but um, I always like to know that women are starting to get the income as well because it's not it's not been for so many years a sustainable living. We know a lot of players who have had double, you know, two jobs because they have to. Um, like my sister, for example, was a carer for so many years um, and played her football as well. And you know, it's pay as you play for quite. Play as, pay as you play for quite some time uh, for her as well and now she's at Aston Villa plays for Republic of Ireland they're going for World Cup qualification as well um, and you know she can live she doesn't have to do two jobs you know and I'm just like brilliant you know brilliant um, and the, these young players yesterday and these senior players as well as part of that England squad who have been paving the way for quite some time are going to get a bit of cash now um, I believe it's a two million prize pot from the commercial uh, outcome of that competition and I think it, but the time it's split up between clubs uh, so but yes between the, the the winners and whatever like that between commercially um, I think each player gets 55 grand roughly in the pocket as a bit of a bonus as well um, 55 grand is a massive wage especially in this day um, and for them to get that extra bit of cash I'm just like fair play and you know it could it's going to it's only going to get bigger it's Absolutely, look at World Cup around the corner. The brands that want to get involved, you know, it's money in the pockets of these players. You know, they've not ever had that. They've not really ever had that support from their, well, they have had support from their clubs, but, you know, in terms of income, it's not been that good. There are several players. You look at Sam Kerr, who's rumored to be on 400 grand a year. She deserves that money and some. You know, uh, Viviana Miedema is another high earner. But all the part the, the players who are part of the England squad deserve the cash that they're going to get. They're going to become superstars over the next few days. Everyone's going to want a bite of them and, and they deserve that cash as well. That's how I feel about that. I feel that the time has come for them to earn um, a little bit extra money. Um, at the end of the game, I couldn't take my eyes off Jill Scott, um, who has been part of the England side for so many years. Um, we haven't seen her play a lot, but she got on yesterday. She played the extra time. She's in that picture behind Chloe Kelly when Chloe Kelly's swinging her shirt and you just see it like <laughs> on her face my sister plays with her at Aston Villa and is, well when she was on loan at Aston Villa last season hopefully that'll happen again um, I, I just said you cannot 
not like Jill Scott. She's everything and she's such a talented player. Um, and what I noticed about Jill at, at Wembley, I was just getting ready to leave because I had to shoot off and do a show. Just as the full-time whistle went, she went straight over to some of the Germany girls and she picked them up off their knees and she gave them a cuddle and she was just showing that empathy because she knows what it's like, you know, to, to lose. I just thought, you're a star. You're such a good person and it's players like that who have led England to where they are today and, and to helping them really seize that moment. Um, what else can I talk about? Oh yeah, what's next? What do the FA do as well, now knowing that all eyes are on them to make sure this momentum continues? For me, it's diversity. For me, it's a shake-up of the board. I spoke to Emma Hayes yesterday and she had said as well, you know, like that there's still this men, well, she didn't say this, I said this, like men own football, men is, uh, you know, if you're a man and you're in football, it's normal. If you're a woman in football, it's still a little bit weird. And it's the same at the boards, it's the same at the top. We've seen FTSE 100 companies bring in more women CEOs who have performed better. Sometimes women are just the answer, right? And I don't mean for that to sound sexist at all. I just mean where games have been held back, where companies have been held back, where jobs have been held back in roles because they've been women. Now is the time to really capitalize and working with your women. Um, and that's what that's what England FA should start doing, in my opinion, is, is just getting diversity that little bit more correct it's not a huge ask they're still humans at the end of the day and guess what they'll probably still get the house tidy as well yes um more back in investment is all going to start coming through that will happen and they just need to continue just capitalizing on this moment because the fa have got it right over the last few years they've made those changes it can still always be better but the changes have come and they're starting to reap the rewards um and get back into grassroots as well. Grassroots is that. Are they prepared for the influx of young girls that want to play football um, today? You know, asking their parents, where can I go to, be, to play football? Are they ready for that? Have they got that all set up? Uh, that's something they have to focus on as well. And there were so many ambassadors who I bumped into yesterday who do that at grassroots level. And they are ready today to see that overnight change uh, and who deserve that as well and who are, who are so pleased. And, you know, it's, it's companies like that who are taking it on board and initiatives that are, are, are prepared for what's going to happen moving forward because it just makes you think of all the young talent coming through and, gosh, where they're going to be at, you know, in the next 10 years. And I mean that for all women's football and all countries as well. Um, but yeah, season the moment, fair play. Was your daughter inspired yesterday? Does your daughter now want to play football? Please leave in the comments. It's nice to engage in this. I have to just like give credit to my dad today as well and, and my, my mum and dad, but dad it was at every single game of Rush's. It's harder now. My dad still works and, and Rusha lives down here, but he can get to every game that he possibly can. He took her to every game on the weekend. He never missed a match. Um, and when she played with the boys for school, uh, I remember going to those games because I might have fancied a boy in the class. Um, but she was there playing with the boys and there was always an issue. You know, no one was ever quite happy with it because she was so bloody good. It was a problem, you know, and, and, and dad was always part of that journey. And now I look at all the dads who are going to be able to take their wee girls um, to football and it to be normal I just think it's so amazing why do I feel like I'm going to cry um, but yeah massive win for women's football um, massive win for, for girls um, everywhere 26 days this competition lasted the Euros I've loved every minute of it it's been so good I'm not ready for it to be over so let's just continue it let's all just be on that together uh, fair play at the Lionesses apparently you brought football home wonderful day thank you for your time um, and thanks for listening and please subscribe and we'll do another video very very soon because there's no way I'm going to stop talking about this yet